I used not to be able to read on buses made me feel sick, but recently I've found I've got over that. Maybe it's a benefit of maturity. I'm glad anyways. There's so much still to read and not much time left, or maybe there is, but how would one know? I was deep in a collection of stories by a writer new to me, recommended by someone whose opinion I respect. The stories were powerful and they told a selection of society about which I knew nothing, yet I found the characters completely convincing. I was hardly aware of the man in the seat next to me until I heard him say excuse me twice and realised he was addressing me. I'm sorry, I said looking up. Are you enjoying that book, he said. Yes, I am, I said, slightly annoyed. I'm glad, he said, smiling. I wrote it. I looked at him more closely. His calm seemed unlikely, judging by his disheveled shoulders, moderate smell and bloodshot eyes. But as soon as I thought this, I realised how flawed my reasoning was. He was, indeed, not unlike some of the very characters I've been reading about. Well, I said, if you did, I congratulate you. It's excellent. You don't believe me? You must admit, I said, it's not something that happens every day. He smiled again. On the contrary, I meet characters from my stories every day in my life. It's not quite the same thing. It is if you're me, he said. Of course, the people I meet don't usually know him, especially if they have yet to appear in one of my stories. Well, this is my stop. I hope you continue to enjoy the book. Goodbye. I watched him make his way to the front of the bus and get off. It was only then that I remembered on the inside back cover of the book was a photograph of the author. The picture was grainy and distant, and showed a much younger, neater man than the one who'd been sitting beside me. But that, I understand, did not prove a thing.